Hi, today I want to talk to you about naming our teardrop camper and about creating the decals that we put on the back. And when I say we, I mean he put on the back. Welcome. Hi, I'm Craig. Hi, I'm Barb. And along with our boys, we're the Geek family. And these are our adventures. Well, before we can talk about why we named our trailer what we did, we kind of have to give you a little bit of our backstory. Craig and I met a little over 26 years ago when I got him lost on a bike ride. I had been, I was an avid cyclist and I'd been a member of a local bike club for quite a few years and poor Craig came out for his first ride and... I just uh, had started cycling within the year and was really interested in getting involved with some organizations and so I decided to go with some friends to uh, my first bike ride with the Westville Bike Club. It was going along pretty good, but everybody was pretty slow, and um, I was not really, you know, I didn't have the map, and, you know, I was following the other bikes, and this bike goes zooming by me. Yeah, this, 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 <laughs> this cute girl with a ponytail, and I thought, well, I think that's where I would rather go. <laughs> so off I go, I, I start chasing down this bike, and she's, you know, zooming along up ahead and goes down this hill, and... Yep, and that was about the time, you know, as we got to the bottom of this hill and started coming into this town, I went, oh my God, we're lost. And, I mean, it was really stupid on my part because I knew all the roads around there. I do not know how I missed this turn. It must have been, you know, meant to be or something. Um, but I turned around and I saw this bike coming down the hill and I just felt terrible because I knew I was going to make him climb this hill. So to kind of make it up to him, you know, I rode back for the next 25 miles and we had a really nice conversation and then, you know, I married him, had a couple kids with him, you know, I guess that was probably more making him suffer. I always said that if I got married, I didn't want a diamond, I wanted a tandem bike. Because to me, having a tandem bike was much more of a sign of commitment, because you have to work together on that to make it go. And by the way, I got the diamond later. <laughs> We had found a uh, Trek Tandem. It was a brand new bike, and we we customized it and kind of built it for you know the two of us. And we spent a lot of hours and uh, miles. Had a lot of fun. Yeah, a lot of fun. <laughs> a lot of miles on this bike, going all over the state of Ohio, and uh, and a lot more than that because we uh, were out the Hilly Hundred and we did some other stuff. That's true. Our boys. Uh, they did some of their first road rides you know behind me on the bike and uh, they kind of got to carry on tradition and it, it was a, it was a great bike so now that our boys are 19 and 21 we're tr kind of getting back to being more the craig and barb and not so much the mom and dad and as part of that we bought this teardrop camper and we decided to call it trek after our beloved tandem that we had so much fun on, on in our 20s and also because trekking is moving across the country, you know, which we intend to do with the hiking and the biking and the just going out and seeing the world and, and this adorable little teardrop. And just like our beloved tandem, it is built for two. I'm going to put a link below to a video from a YouTube channel, Camp and Camera, and he shows you how to do all the stuff with PowerPoint. That's how I learned how to do it. But what I did was I basically took a picture of the back of our teardrop camper, you know, all nice and not having anything on it, and then overlaid it with pictures for the decals that I wanted to put on there. And after I was done, I printed, I actually saved off a PDF from the PowerPoint, and I took that to a local sign shop, and they printed off the decals. The first thing we needed to do to put the decals on was wait for there to be a day above 40 in December in Ohio. First thing we did was spin the trailer around so we could get the back of the trailer facing the sun. Uh, this served two purposes. One, to help get, the, get us above 50, and the second one was for old eyes to be able to uh, see what we were cleaning and where we were actually laying down the decals. I used wheel chocks to keep the trailer from rolling down the driveway, which would have been kind of uh, uncomfortable. Uh, the next thing I did was Clean the whole back of the trailer with Windex and uh, used a microfiber towel to keep dirt from reattaching and leaving any kind of rag lint uh, that would possibly get under the uh, decal. 
I have a little heater sitting on this really fancy heater mount. Uh, I think you, most people probably have a mount like that. Uh, we used it to additionally heat the back of the trailer just to make sure we could keep the temperatures up. Uh, the next thing we did was to kind of just uh, temporary mount the decals on, get all the measurements, make sure we had things centered, straight. Because these decals are fairly large and somewhat intricate, I wanted to be sure that we could uh, lay them out uh, on the back of the trailer and get the measurements and then be able to uh, reproduce that position once we uh, pulled, pulled the decals away. Um, I ended up using uh, the blue painter's tape to kind of make box references uh, you know once we had the measurements in place. Game plan when I first started uh, laying these, the transfers down was to use the simpler ones first to try to get a little bit of experience with this particular product. Uh, by the way, these these were really nice transfers. Uh, the, 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 de the decal quality was excellent. They laid out nice and smooth, uh, fairly thin, which I, I think is fairly important to getting these down right. So when I put the Trek one down, I, I laid this one down by hand, and after, after doing this, I kind of realized that the larger ones, especially the uh, tandem bicycle, was going to be difficult uh, trying to just line it up by eye and stick it down. So the Trek decal, I did lay in just by hand, but the other two, I came up with a different uh, method of doing it. Once the uh, decal transfer goes down, First smooth with my hands, make sure we had no really big bubbles. With the, uh, with the transfers though, the uh, company that had, had done them for us actually gave us a free uh, felt squeegee to help smooth the, uh, uh, get the bubbles out. So, and this really worked well. I've, I've never had one of those before, so uh, this for me was a bit of a learning experience. One thing you wanna make sure is that you while you're squeegeeing and pushing the detail down is that you get it down really good and tight because when you pull off the top layer a lot of times it'll want to pull the uh, pull the transfer off and another way that I found that that getting this off is easy is to, to get a fairly sharp angle on while you're pulling the paper off is not you know lifting up but lifting more back One thing that really helped me uh, while I was doing was, was, was to lay down little frames, little corners that uh, the, uh, the paper would actually kind of mesh back into when you laid it down. Uh, really helped get, get things in straight. When I got to the two larger transfers, the one thing I realized was there was just no way I was going to be able to pull the, uh, pull the uh, backing paper off and just drop that right onto the trailer. I was going to have to find a better way to actually lay this down accurately. So the solution I came up with was just to lay a piece of uh, tape across the top of the, the, whole, the whole paper and then lift it up, pull the backing off uh, of the decal and then just kind of stretch the paper out with the transfer on it and just let it lay down flat. And I have my little boxes on the corner where I could uh, double check and make sure that it had gone, it was going in where I had measured everything to be, smoothed it down, it really worked well. I'd never done, done this like this before. Uh, when I've done cars, I've always been able to just pretty much stick them down. So uh, this is something I'm gonna carry forward when I when I do those too. So again, when I was pulling off the uh, backing paper, I squeegeed down really, really tight before, and then as I was pulling it off, I would, I was watching very carefully to see if it was pulling any of the uh, decal back up. 
I did have a little trouble with the uh, bicycle. Uh, some of the small intricate pieces trying to come up and so by going slowly obviously I was able to catch that. If I would have just ripped it right off I would have taken the decal. So I think one of the things that's really important when you're doing this is is you know, me, you know getting your measurements right uh, but just being patient. Going slowly it goes much quicker than what you think it's going to and then just when you're pulling the papers and things like that, just pull slow and uh, watch what's going on under the decal. Sometimes you can just actually, if it's starting to come up, you can actually take your squeegee and just kind of poke it down. And then it, you know, in this case, it, 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 it sealed down really nice. So uh, it was actually a really easy job, much easier than I thought it was going to be. And as these are a, uh, a two paper type uh, transfer, you have a little bit of latitude because you, 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 you pull the bottom off where it's sticky and, and that will, will adhere right to the trailer, but you do have the top layer which you can actually attach uh, some tape to and actually get that hold that in place for you while you're laying them down. Now it's time to remove the top sheet. This decal has a lot of intricate details, so I want to move slowly just in case it starts to lift anywhere. As I start pulling the top layer off, I try to notice the flow of the graphic. As I'm pulling, I attempt to follow the long lines of the graphic, hoping to avoid lifting any small details or thin lines. I keep working the top layer off. It's getting more difficult to work as it's starting to bunch up, but so far nothing is lifted. I finally got into the lower part of the graphic. This is where all the fine details live. As I'm pulling in this section, I have my first lift. A little correction with the squeegee, and I'm back underway and finish the transfer. And this is the part of the project where you get to step back and say, looks good. Well, that's about it. Uh, thank you for watching. If you do have any questions or suggestions, please leave those below and be more than happy to respond and answer any questions. Didn't Craig do a great job on the decals? It's exactly what I wanted it to look like. Thanks for watching.